stuff for KSW. Remember? Oh yes, I remember this. This is where I run, I run, I run down... Yeah, this is the road and there's the rocks, the Causeway Stones over there. You see? Oh yes, yes, I remember. And you cleaned uh, here. Yeah, yeah, you cleaned yeah. Up. yeah. See Scotland from here. You can see the uh, you can see that you can see the cliffs from uh, here. When it's uh, the sea is clear, but it's the weather's bad today, so you can't see it. It's very cloudy. Very strange. Yes. Why? How did this come here? Why only this place? Yeah, I know. Why just here? <laughs> Why? What is this place? Just a small house. Oh, oh. A small house. somebody oh. lived here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why? Why is this here? Why? <laughs> How did this come here? Oh. This was obviously used as something a long time ago. Yeah, long time ago. Somebody something. prepared this. Yeah, uh, but something. Something. They used this for something here. <clears throat> I don't know. I think it's quite crazy. Just keep going, it takes you back to the Giant's Causeway. Right along the cliff. A very, very long, a very long. Yes, here, Game of Thrones.
First place, out here. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Yes. Beautiful area, beautiful place for for something like this. But nice, very nice. Yes, nice place. Yeah, this is good location from uh, Game of Thrones. Yeah, perfect. Perfect, place. Perfect, perfect, perfect place. place. Perfect place. To fantastic movie. Yeah. Science fiction movie. If it was a nice day, I would swim, <laughs> but not today. First, maybe I ask you about uh, your career. When and how did you start your career? Um, I first started when I was about six, 15 years old. I started at judo here in my hometown, judo. We did, uh, did judo for about four years, five years maximum. And I only really did it at the start. It was just a hobby first. I did it as a hobby. I played football for a long time also. And uh, then after a while, I got more excited into the martial arts side of things. I did judo, I did wrestling, did boxing, and then had a few fights, a few judo fights. I uh, started competing in MMA, amateur, had a couple of amateur fights. And from then, whenever I saw that, you know, MMA, mixed martial arts, uh, seemed like it was more my thing and I uh, that was it I just never looked back I just kept going for it and I never ever thought it would ever be a career I never thought it was ever going to be a career I just thought that it was you know just going to be a hobby on the side and uh, and never did I ever think I would be traveling the world so <laughs> one thing that's gave me is a lot of opportunities to travel the world and meet different people and and challenge myself too you know it makes you mixed martial arts makes you challenge yourself so for that I'm grateful for that and who is your biggest inspiration um I don't know it's quite a hard question because I never really looked up to too many people I kind of just did my own thing you know but if I was to pick inspiration as a fighter, would probably be the people who I watched at the start would have been, when I was younger, would have been Andrei Arlovsky, still in the UFC this day, and George St. Pierre, Cain Velazquez. You know, these were the people who I watched at the start whenever I was starting to, to fight. <clears throat> and at this time, it was on a normal channel on TV, the like Bravo. It wasn't even on Sky Sports, it wasn't on BT Sport, it was Bravo, the channel, the free channel. And uh, we used to watch it back then, it was only one show every three months. The UFC, maybe, I don't know, 15, the next one would have been three months later, UFC 16. 
Robbie Lawler was away was in the UFC away back then. He was fighting against Diaz. I remember watching this fight. So I was around fifteen years old at this time. But the people in that era is the people I kind of you know followed more, and the people who are, say would have been more inspirational to me. So mm, I remember your lucky story when you had <coughs> fifteen years. You watch a with friend. Um, strong men. Pudzianowski. Pudzianowski, yeah. Yeah. Pudzianowski. Yeah, we were young. We were, uh, you know, we liked watching all types of sports, combat sports. We never really had, uh, in this village, we never had anything for that. It was only really because of the judo club. This is how it all kind of started, but we always watched the fight channel. We watched uh, Strongman was a big thing. Our family always watched it. We always watched it in the house. And we used to have a pick, right? Which guy do you want to go for? My cousin would have went for... American guy, I don't know his name, Brad, some guy Shaw. Um, and I says I'll go for the Polish guy <laughs> because he looked good. You know, he had yes, you know, athletic, he was, body, athletic yeah. body. He wasn't fat. He was strong, a little bit lighter, faster, and I picked him all the time. And what well, he's like the most successful strong man ever. I think six times, five or six times yeah, champion. Yeah, so six times no one's beat this record yet. So. And he's went from one sport to a totally different sport. He's went to MMA and made a good career in MMA after his sport. So he brought a lot of new uh, eyes to the sport because he come from the strongman. All these people want to follow him after the strongman. What's he up to? What's he doing? Ah, he's fighting MMA. And, you know, he's got a good record in MMA. My first fight was against G- Gamrot in the National yeah. Stadium. I, I met him and... I didn't want to go over and say hello, how are you? But I wanted to. I thought maybe he, you know, just wanted to be on his own, not speak too much. But once I spoke, he was like, "Hello, my friend. How are you?" <laughs> and <clears throat> he was cool. And I told him about the story. I picked you when we were younger. We watched Strongman. I says, "I'm going for the Polish boy," and he says, "Cheers, cheers." cheers. He says, "Thank you." <laughs> and his English is very good. Very, very good English. And. Sometimes we chat on uh, his Facebook. Sometimes I send messages and he replies back. So I like Pudzianowski. I think he's had a good career. So another question uh, I would like to ask uh, something about uh, Northern Ireland. Uh, which um, which legend is your favorite? Northern Ireland? Oh, it would have to be... Everyone knows George Best. You know George Best is the... Best, yeah, f- a footballer, footballer. Oh, He's from uh, ni- 1960s time, 1968 to 1970 something. Yeah, he was one of the best players in the world at the time. He was, and uh, you know, crazy how someone from such a small place can be one of the best players in the world. At this time, it was who was there in that era and Pele says that he was uh, George Best was the best George Best says that Pele was the best and I found that quite amazing because even though Northern Ireland is such a small place it can create a lot of good athletes if they put their mind to it as well and so George Best would probably be the one that would kind of come to my mind obviously there's a lot of good boxers as well who I kind of look up to Carl Frampton um, Barry McGuigan, uh, lots of good boxers from Northern Ireland who've uh, been world champions, but the one that stands out for me is George Best. <laughs> George Best. Yeah, yeah. You need to look him up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, for Manchester United player also. <laughs> Your dream fight? Mm, my dream fight would be a uh, good question. Like any type of fight. Yes. Hmm. Ah, in Poland, I don't know. It's a hard question. Dream fight. Mm. With who? With who? Yeah, maybe I fight with uh, <laughs> me against two opponents. <laughs> maybe, maybe on Fame MMA. <laughs> we'll see. Because it's a new thing now, this freak fight and organised. New trend, now it's new trend. New trend. I've seen the shift in sports from uh, just proper martial artists to freak fights. I'm interested in this here. I think it's it's a new thing. Some people don't like it. and But you got 
when the world changes, you got to adapt to everything, you know, like social media over the last 10 years just change and some people don't like it, but you need to adapt. And if you want to be, you know, when you stay on one place, you will not, you can, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to be able to adapt and welcome change. You know, some people don't like change. I don't like change too much, but in sports, it's different, you know, because you know, different challenges can get you excited too. And I see that you can go back to, you know, you're on Fame MMA, you can have these fights where you can fight me against my opponent, Popic. He's, what, 120 kilos. I'm 85 kilos. So it's kind of like the old day and pride, pride days, where they have open weight category. I like this. And it's a new experience for you. It's a new experience and it's, something that's happened before in Japan. They did all these crazy fights and it disappeared for a while and now it's come back again. So I'm, like, I'm interested in all the type of fights, you know? I'm interested in two against one. I'm interested in fighting two, uh, two times one night, the start of the card, at the end of the card. I'm interested in fighting heavier opponents. I'm interested in fighting social media influencers that want to try and challenge former UFC fighter. <laughs> so I'll play the game, no problem. I can play the game all right. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you think about Popek? You see maybe yeah. or maybe... We met before. To... My first interaction was the National Stadium. He fought on the National Stadium. Fighting, I think, so with Robert Burnett. Yep, yeah, that's right, yeah. I remember we spoke in the backstage. Both of the guys were there, we were backstage. This guy Robert was there, Popic was there, and I never knew Popic. I just said, who's this crazy guy with the yeah, eyes like and eye, yeah. the scar on his face? And I search him on Google, read about his history. I watched video, um, Vice, a documentary, mad, absolutely crazy lifestyle. And, but I've got nothing bad against him. You know, I just think, yeah. He knows it's an opportunity to fight me and it's a good opportunity for me to fight him because he's well known in Poland. He has a good following, good social media. And him fighting me, he's like, oh, he's fighting a strong fighter from the UK and he's fought all over the world against tough opponents. So for him, it's a challenge and for me, it's a challenge, but nothing disrespectful. I think it's just a good fight for good business. Uh, so let me now I ask you something about Northern Ireland. Uh, which uh, league or legend is your favorite? Uh, something like a giant uh, castle, <laughs> castleway. Oh, the giant's causeway. causeway uh, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. The, you want to hear the mythical story of the the yeah, giant? Yeah, something about yeah, the yeah. Yes. And Amazing story. from Scotland. People, people he don't know about this. I remember when we were in school, they always talked about this uh, story about the giant from. Uh, Finn McCool, you know this photo you have out the side, yeah. this here guy here from uh, the mythical story they have that from and then you had the one from Scotland and because Scotland has the same rocks, you know, same volcanic rocks. Yeah, yeah and uh, the mythical story is years ago they meet in the middle of the sea and they fight with each other. <laughs> I don't know who won exactly. I think maybe Fun Nicole won this fight. <laughs> Sent the Scottish guy back to Scotland. <laughs> and uh, But there's a lot of good history from the Giants Causeway. Lots of history. And it's interesting to do a tour around it to understand uh, how it happened. But I think it's real to say that the volcanic eruption from a long, long, long time ago yeah. made these columns of the, you know, 50 P shape. And, but people come from all over the world to see this, everywhere. Yes, the same like Stonehenge. Like Stonehenge, it's yeah. The same place. It's just like, how did these uh, stones get like this? Yes. Uh, way back, I don't know how many years ago? How, how is it, the people just, <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> there was no machines to lift stuff, yes. so there's something happened. But I, th I find that very a mistress because if you go back 50 years ago, 1950s, 1960s, there wasn't really much machinery to do this type of thing. If you go back 100 years ago... Yes, nobody have this thing. You know, you go back 200 years ago... On your horse, on your horse. Yeah, so how did they manage to... It. It's like, hmm... This is good mystery. It's very, very mysterious. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm quite into it in a way, because when you think deeply about it, it's like... Kulva. Hmm. 
how did this happen? <laughs> Everybody wants to know, but... But well, they see too many rock in the... Uh, around. Yeah, around yeah, it's unbelievable. And same with uh, the pyramids, you know, the pyramids in Egypt. Pfft, this is mind-boggling. How, yes, yes. how, uh, how, can, how can it be? 2000 years ago. Some uh, columns, you know, connect it are like two ton. Yes. You know, how did build and connect together? Yes, but everywhere only sand. Yeah, it's unbelievable. I mm, makes you think more about the world. <laughs> yeah, he likes he likes to drink Guinness. <laughs> now strawberry. <Cheers. laughs> mm. I like Guinness. It's good for you. Yeah, my favorite. Very good. Like a, a whiskey, Bushmans. I think maybe next time you come. Uh, because at the moment it's closed at the moment, but yeah, next time really maybe it's the COVID, summer time, COVID, yes. the summer time they open it up and you can do the tour around the uh, uh, to see how it's made, and that's interesting to see it. I brought my friend there. Mm, to two thousand and fifteen, we went and did a tour around it, and it was that was the first time I was in there since I was young. I remember going there for with the school when I was younger, and so for me it was the first time. Even though I live here, <laughs> it's the first time I was there in a long time. But it's interesting to know. And some of the whiskey they got up there has been in a jar for 25 years, you know, just in a jar and barrel, hidden oh, yeah, out of the, the way. Website, website, mm-hmm. uh, a long, 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 long time. It's very expensive. Stuff's been there since we were born. <laughs> Sometimes for uh, 1,000 pounds. Yeah, uh, some, some, I don't know how much the uh, expensive bottle is, maybe like. Four hundred pounds, I think, yeah. maybe. You know the the old one, the old. This is expensive, very expensive. Yeah. Whiskey. It's a big business too. Yes, yes. This is where Conor McGregor makes whiskey. Oh yeah, yeah. I about this. yeah. Yes. His whiskey's made in the Bushmills Distillery. We've got lots of friends that work in there also. Property like, twelve. Property, proper 12, property yeah. twelve. There's a lot of my friends, uh, people, family members, all worked here. And uh, lots of my family members worked here. Lots of friends work there still to this day. And uh, yeah, it's interesting. Mm-hmm. And it's the oldest distillery in the world. <laughs> Can you believe that? Yeah, in the I world, read, uh, oldest <laughs> about this uh, factory. Hmm. And so, what are you plan uh, after uh, after fight with Bobek? What do I plan? Yes. I don't know. Never a holiday. We want to go on holiday with my kids, the boys. We need to go on holiday because during coronavirus, we booked two holidays. We booked holidays and cancel, cancel, cancel. So now restrictions are all being lifted for this year. I think people want to live. I think people want to live their life and just get on with their life because a lot of people have become depressed during this time, you know, and listening to the media, listening to the news every day. It's like people just boom, boom, boom. Their minds go crazy. Like they get your, get the rat, put the rat in the cage and you're just stuck there. So. People just want the freedom to go in and live their life. And I think this year is going to be good. I think it's going to be more popular. Like our town here, I think, is going to be very busy this year because there's lots of activities that it was cancelled in the last two years. Like there's a motorbike race that's here every year. It was cancelled oh, for yeah, two years. Was, yes. The Northwest, we call it. And it's very, very popular. Lots of people come, brings lots of business to the North Coast. and. With that being cancelled, that was a bit of a bummer, but now, this year, it's all going ahead, and I think people, this place will be very busy. People can get to go and do what they want. They'll make up for the lost time. But for me, I'll go on holiday after the fight, probably. Uh, what are the biggest challenge that you have faced? The biggest challenge? Yes, the hmm. biggest challenge of your life. Um... Maybe in sports, I would say mostly a challenge been in sports fights would be uh, Ultimate Fighter. When we did the Ultimate Fighter, we went to Australia. We were in Australia for six weeks, seven weeks actually. No contact, no, no TV, no phones, no nothing. Just stay in. Australia, you're fighting in the UFC. Was, you know, we did uh, Ultimate Fighter. You know, Ultimate Fighter. Uh, Team UK against Australia. So I was Team UK, Australia. We live in this big fancy house in uh, Sydney, Australia. We stay there for six weeks. We fight against each other. We train two times per day. 
and mentally it was tough but that was a challenge that way but I think only the toughest survive and that's why I think I got through because I was tough I think I got through because I wanted it too I really wanted it some people who were on the Team UK they were well off they had good business their family had good businesses they had but we had nothing you know I had nothing this was I wanted to fight and I think that gave, gave you more determination to win the competition and I end up fighting a teammate I end up fighting a friend in the final and it was a tough to fight a friend because we we were pretty close together we were being the closest in the, out of everyone so I had to fight him in the final and I won by decision in Australia we come back after three months and do the final and I won the fight and then I get the contract for the UFC and but it's always easier getting to the UFC they say it's easy to get there but you have to stay there is harder and I had mixed results in the UFC I won fights I had a decent record in the UFC I had five wins three losses one draw some very close fights could have been a little bit different but I would never change anything for it but if I if I was to go back again and have another chance I would I would fight openly more uh, than as opposed to being a little bit more uh, tactical I would be a wee bit more aggressive if I was to fight there again so it's a show where they like to see finish fights they like to see spectacular fights and my style is more grinding style you know uh, not overly exciting to see that and a lot of my fights go with the judges decision so but I think it was a great experience I had a good experience in the UFC I don't think I'll ever go back there again I think I can see my career finishing in Poland I can think my career will finish when I'm like 40 I don't know I say I'm going to finish at 40 years old but maybe <laughs> maybe I'll be like 45 years old you never know I don't know what yes, you don't know what can happen yes, because maybe I just say all right next two fights I'm finished once I turn 40 I'm finished but something next comes up something next comes up age is just a number because who fought in the UFC at the weekend uh, Andre Orlovsky 43 years old and fighting in the UFC and he fights someone who's younger than him he fought someone who's like 20s his opponent and he won the fight so I think it's to do with your mindset because a lot of people will say ah when you you'll be ready to finish soon you're what age are you 34 35 ah you'll be ready to finish but really maybe in your mind you're not ready to finish you can keep going keep going keep going I think I'll finish if I get knocked out a lot of times if I get knocked out three times two three times I think I would stop you know if someone like and I'm <laughs> looking at the stars I think this is when I need to right right you got to protect your brain <laughs> not much left <laughs> so but until that happens I'm going to keep going I'm tough when it when it gets to the nitty gritty grind I can I know I can bite down and go to the to the end I know I can so you have it you have to have it in you too you know you have to have deep inside that you can't be the hammer all the time you have to be the nail too so I can be the nail and the hammer I can be both so a lot of people can't do that lots of people can always give it but can't take it but I can take it and give it so and keep coming you are international fighter, you're fighting in San Diego, uh, Sydney, Poland, uh, where else? Oh, Las Vegas. Oh, Las Vegas. Brazil, two times Brazil, Brazil. yeah. Okay. Boston, San Jose, California. I was meant to fight, but my opponent got uh, injured one week before, so I don't fight. But I go and watch the fight. Um, Dublin, two times Dublin. Oh, Dublin Dublin's yeah. very good, good atmosphere. Um, London. England, Manchester, uh, Mexico. I was meant to fight in Mexico uh, with Diego Sanchez, but I tore ligaments in my knee and I had to pull out from the fight. I was meant to fight Jorge Masvidal. He got injured. I ended up fighting Gleason Tebow in Boston. And I've been at a lot of places. Yeah, Poland. I fought all over Poland for the last four years, four or five years in Poland. I liked. I like fighting in Poland. I like it. 
I even like it when they boo me when I'm in Poland because most of the time when I fight in Poland, I'm fighting Polish people. Uh, so so they're going to boo me. <laughs> but I don't care about that. Yeah, uh, so people It's, from another Netherlands you know about your success in Poland? Yeah, lots of people yeah. know, yeah, lots of people see my social media, my social media, you look at my social media, it's mostly Polish, everything's in Polish, <laughs> so, but not not the promotion just helped me get there, I helped myself get there too, because I could just go there and fight normally, ah, thank you, bye bye, see you later, people just forget, but whereas when you make something happen, you create something, people like, who's this guy here, who is this guy, he's interesting. So, I think I made a good name for myself in Poland, and I got a, a good fan base. I have a good fan base in Poland. Poland's, they're good to me. Polish people's good to me. It's kind of mixed, obviously, too. You get people who talk shit, <laughs> but that's it. But I've got a lot of support. I've got a lot of very good sponsors from Poland. All, all companies from Poland sponsor me, and. Uh, I like, I like Poland. I think that's where my career will finish. I believe it will finish in Poland. Uh, what do you think about the fight Boris Mankowski and Zhukovsky, Marian Zhukovsky? Yeah, I watched the fight. I watched, yeah, we watched all the fights on KSW this time. I think it was a good fight. Um, my, I watched it with my, my dad. We watched the fight together and, you know, he scored it his way and I scored it my way. And he says, I, Boris wins this fight. I says, no. Nah, I think it's very close, but when Boris won his rounds, he won them clearly. But the rounds that Zhukovsky won were very close, but Zhukovsky won them. I think three rounds for Marion, two rounds for Boris. Because Boris, first two rounds very good. Boris was very good in the first two rounds. He, And then round three, round four, Boris started to slow a little bit. I think if he used his energy a little bit, better you know if he conserved his energy Boris could win this fight but the fight could go either way but I know why they gave the fight to uh, Morian I understand why they gave it to Morian but Boris when Boris won his two rounds he won them by more but the other rounds was very close but Morian did win them but personally I thought they were going to give the fight to Boris I thought they were going to give the fight to Boris But I still want to fight Boris in MMA. I still want a third fight with Boris. <laughs> still, still yeah, yeah, yeah. Him. Because I, I won the first fight MMA. He won this uh, fame MMA. He won the boxing fight, and we want. I want another fight with him. MMA fight. We can do catch weight, seventy five kilos, seventy seven kilos. I want to grapple with him. You know, grapple wrestling kicks too. I like kicks so. I want to do a rematch with Boris in MMA. I don't know if it will be in KSW. Maybe if they come and speak to me. <laughs> Or if they don't, maybe he can come to Fame MMA and we can do an MMA fight. I see Fame MMA just announced the uh, Adrian Polak against um, Ferrari. Uh, Ferrari. Ferrari, Ferrari yes. Unlimited no, time. time. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Maybe they should do this with me and Boris. <laughs> You know, MMA fight, unlimited time, I yeah. think this is very interesting. I'm up for that. We will see what's happening. I'm very, know. I'm very up for that there. Once I <laughs> pop it, uh, take pop it's teeth, pop it. And you come back to Ireland, mother. Cheers. <laughs> so, your friend, Kriha, UFC fighting now in next month in Federation Naiman. What do you think about this? What the veter federation? About this fight, about this fight. His fight. I don't know who his opponent is. I just know he's fighting on there. He told me he's fighting there. I don't know. Um, it would be good for him because he's obviously getting better, moving, getting more confident. Because in sports you need confidence too, you know. And you can see from the first fight to you know his last fight, you can see improvement. And. Uh, But everything's in your mind also, you know, you need to have a sharp, you need to just be like, fuck, let's go, it's time to fight. You need to have that inside and obviously he's improving, you know, and you never know what happens. So it'll be an interesting fight. I've, I don't know about this promotion, MMA VIP, I don't know too much about this promotion. I see some things about it. I know Naaman wants to fight with me, but 
for me, this is very easy money. If they want yes. me to, if they want me to pay some easy money for me, no problem. This is like a walk in the park. I can fight this guy with one hand tied behind my back and just use my left hand. I can beat this guy. So if they want it, they can send me a good contract. If they don't want it, no problem. Uh, what do you think about uh, Federation Don Casio? Right. Yeah, I never. Uh, I just heard about. Uh, I know. I was, and I have two more fights with Fame MMA. Two fights. Yes. I signed contract for two fights. My first fight, Popic. The next fight was supposed to be rematch with Don Casio. You know, but we don't agree which size of gloves. Just sign the contract. Okay, no problem. And then when I signed the contract, two weeks later, I see, well, Don Casio. He has the. What's this promotion he's at? And I hear he's finished with Fame MMA. He's finished. Yes, exactly. You know, new federation, uh, new business people, you know, start this new federation and they use Don Casio as the face of this promotion. I think so, yes, only on the face. Yeah, yeah. Face. And I don't know why they fall out, maybe money thing. Usually most time why people fall out is because of money, you know. Why, why do you not speak with me? Because of money. Okay, right, I get that. So, I know we did very good pay-per-view for this fight, and but I fought him in his sport, I fought him in boxing. How about he fights me in MMA? Or maybe one round boxing, next round MMA, okay. next round boxing, next round MMA, but he knows. You know, first round boxing, once it goes MMA, he's dead. It's like... One minute, I finish him in one minute. Not even less than one minute, the fight's over. Yeah, he's very smart. Yeah, but... He knows um, what's yeah, he knows, exactly. He knows he would get his ass handed to him. So, he's away running. Running. <laughs> See ya. And so, I'll fight with someone else. I don't know who I'm going to fight. Maybe if someone from... I know some guys from KSW, some uh, welterweight fighters. Me! <laughs> They're crying. Ah, you're not real sportsman. You're fighting freak fighters. I'm just saying, I'm going where I see my worth, you know. If no one wants to give me fight on KSW or MMA fight for good money, I'm not going to fight for shit money, no chance. No chance. Why should I? When I look at other fighters and promotions getting paid good money, I'm like, no chance. No way. I'm not being used. So, if they want to offer me good money to fight someone good, very good, no problem. I'm not going to just, like, I'm 34 years old, I'm not going to fight for bad money. If they offer me good money to fight someone good, I'll fight. And these guys who are crying on KSW, a couple of guys who message me, yeah, you're not a sportsman no more, you're this, you're that. I just say, what's your problem? What's wrong with you? What are you coming onto my Instagram or my Facebook to talk shit for? Why didn't you just focus on yourself? And these people who talk about me as people who's been uh, TKO'd in their last fight, uh, smashed on the ground. <laughs> like, quit. They quit in the fight. I don't quit in my fights. They quit in their fights and they're crying about me, about not being a real sports person. I just, as I train every day, I do something every day and if we want to fight, no problem. Maybe they bring these crybabies over from KSW, bring them into Fame MMA, bring them into the big publicity fight, you know, let's see if they can handle the pressure. And we'll fight. We'll fight. I don't know this guy's name, but there's some guy from KSW who talking all the time, sending me messages. So I just blocked him now, you know. So if he wants to see me uh, at the Fame MMA, uh, see me, come to my face and say something, you know, instead of on the internet. I like it if you want to come to my face, we can just sort it out face to face. But... <laughs> I know they're just uh, jealous. The people are jealous also. Yeah, yeah, I, under yes. I understand this. Yes. They think, all oh, right, this guy's fighting these fights here. He's getting paid good money to go fight here. Uh, uh, people get a little bit salty with that, you know. And uh, as I say, I know what it feels like. Never worry about other people, you know. Think about what you're doing. Always concentrate on what you need to do. Never worry about uh, who this guy's fighting or what this guy is going to, uh, where he's going to be next. Just you worry about yourself because you'll focus too much on him. When your next fight comes, you're going to get smashed. And then what? What can you say? Nothing. Always focus on your fight and what needs to be done. And and that's it. I, I have noticed that when I went to Fame MMA, people will write a lot of shit. I just like, 
I just, <laughs> whatever, I just smile and laugh. Because what's people going to say to me? Are they going to come up to me on the internet and say stuff when they're ringing through to Fame MMA on Face to Face? Yeah, Norman, why you do this? Yeah, you're this. And when they come to me, my face, hello, uh, we get the photo together. Yes, you talk shit to me on the internet, but you want a photo with me. <laughs> There's lots of people like this, but I'm, I'm easy going, I'm cool, you know, I'm chilled. Most of the time I'm chilled. But if you talk shit, I ain't gonna let you talk shit, I'll talk shit back to you. So, that's my run over. <laughs> Somebody from a high league uh, called to you about fight? A high league? High league or maybe elite fighters or... Uh, what's, elite, what, what's elite fighters? Elite fighters. Uh, new federation, new federation. Yeah? yeah. No, I don't, high league, no, I don't hear from high league, no. I know one guy from there who wanted to fight me, who fights uh, some guy, a uh, big guy, what's his name? He fight kickboxing on last uh, high league. Uh, Dennis Zawinski. Yeah, yeah, Dennis yeah, Zawinski. yeah. This guy keeps calling me out, and I'm like, "Who are you? I don't know you. What's your name? Where'd you come from? Uh, you're oh, you're a hooligan. You're ah, right. You're the number one guy of the hooligan. <laughs> and like, I know he wants to promote himself and stuff, but let's be real here. Let's be serious. This guy's 120 kilos, <laughs> jacked on steroids, beast. I watched his fights, strong fighter, knockout guy. And I'm thinking, right, okay, his last fight, he fought someone, Alan. Alan, uh, yes, Alan Kaczynski. Yeah, he fought this guy, and how many kilos difference? 25, 25 kilos? 25, yeah, 25 kilos. What happens? He don't do nothing. He don't finish him. Now, if I fight, I'm 85. If I say, fight someone 60 kilos, me, if I fight someone 60 kilos, I'm going to kill them. Serious, I kill them. <laughs> so he he goes to the judge's decision with this guy and he wants to fight with me because he sees that I'm you know I got social media he thinks that I'm a wee easy turn he'll knock me out but he didn't knock his last guy out but what happened to him in MMA uh, where war, war tour war tour yes yeah yeah what, what happened he fight he fights someone his own size this guy was 110 kilos he was 120 kilos Dennis Yes. And I watched, let me see MMA, hmm, he looked aggressive. But when the guy take him down to the ground and the guy come to the mount, bang, bang, two elbows, no more, I quit. There. Yeah. He basically... Does this uh, fight without gloves? It doesn't matter, uh, it's MMA uh, with no gloves, but he... <laughs> no, he tapped out, so that's quitter. You know, when I see that as someone who quit, legit quit, he didn't have to do that. He could defend, uh, pull guard, but he just wants to be bully. I want to be bigger and knock you out. I see, I know guys like this. I know loads of guys like this. But if we ever fight, I will fight him, no problem. If we fight, we can fight MMA. But he needs to cut weight a little bit. He can cut weight to 100 kilos. Stay off the juice. Stay off the juice and we can fight. But he said to me, why you fight Popic and he's 120 kilos? Yeah, because I don't know you. No one knows you. Everyone knows Popic. So it's not like I'm going to go, hey, UFC. Uh, yes, you know who I am. I want to fight Khabib Nurmagomedov. Let, yes, come on. I've got good uh, rest and defense. Let me fight with this guy. Do you think that's going to happen? No. No chance. No, no chance. So how can he just expect to just go, oh, let me fight Norman Park? No chance. Build a reputation. Build a name. My agent says he's just playing a little game, you know, but he's got, not disrespectful or anything like that, but when he says he wants to knock me out, now he pushed my buttons. <laughs> I says to him, MMA, no problem. I'll fight with anyone at MMA, no problem. Any other? Did you heard, did you heard something about federation in Russia? A freak federation in Russia? Ah, yeah, I've seen this freak fight in uh, Russia. They've been doing, pff, I don't know, I've seen it on Instagram crazy like uh, they do like uh, two guys against two guys yes. and fuck I think so Russia copy everything from Poland yeah yeah that's right I saw this and I saw um, this big heavyweight big fat guy fighting this woman yes, I see you this know story. this yeah. woman <laughs> this woman won <laughs> yeah this is a good fight but yeah. I see fight uh, in Deep MMA 3 when uh, guys uh, fighting with girl uh, this I girl, see. she don't have no chance. Yeah, but I don't like this. I don't like uh, man against... Guy is too strong. Yeah, for, I d for... 
I think this is a little bit too much man against woman. I don't think physically a man, you know, if a man trains hard, a man's physically stronger in a way like uh, attributes to uh, men stronger, you know, and a physical contact stronger, you know, maybe a woman doing powerlifting can be stronger than this man, but in sports fights, it's, it's not right. I don't think they fight man against woman, no. In general, it's a bad, it's a bad, uh, it's a bad look to the sport. I don't want to see man fight against woman. A man should never be fighting against a woman ever. And people who put on fights like this, I don't like it. I think some people are waiting always for a controversy, controversy yeah. fight. Yeah. But it's okay if the man fights a woman and the woman smashes the man's face in. Yes. But what if you know the man? This is a good fight. This if is the man fight. smashes, woman, uh, he, she, uh, she yeah, yeah. Fight. This is yeah. But the man smashes uh, a woman. This is what. Uh, yeah. What's happened? What's happened? Yeah, I don't like this. I don't I agree with this too much. I don't agree with that. Controversial. Yeah, but <laughs> it's Russia. Russia does yeah, everything. Yeah. <laughs> and. Uh, yeah, I, li I like I like Poland. I like the scene in Poland. I like everything about the whole Polish fight scene. I'm excited about different fights. I'm excited about I'm excited about every fight. I'm excited about uh, two fighters, two me, my coach, me, my training partner against some fighter and training partner. I'm interested in this. Not three against three, two against two. I think's good, and uh, also. I'm interested in uh, all these freak fights too, like fight bigger guy against smaller guy, the dwarf, <laughs> mini Mike against yeah, big Jack. I, I'm really, yeah, I like this. I think it's good, you know. And it's as you said, it's a new trend. People, yeah, because pe this guy always training. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. They always sport, sport, sport. Yeah, yeah. People they train all the time for the fights. Even the fighters and famous MMA people say, "Oh, who are these guys? They're idiots. They're just." social media guys but they train you know you, you go and watch they train for hard for two months three months to prepare and it's a lot of pressure you know because when they go to fight at the fame mma there's not just a few hundred people there's thousands of people watching and it's like cool va <sighs> nervous lots of people can get very nervous uh, it's a quite a big big promotion the UK market is very funny. It's different. The Polish market is the best market for them because they sure they come. Fame may come to Newcastle before. They put all the people from Geordie Shore, you know, all these people, and they don't sell good pay per view. They lost money, so they won't go back there again. I know for a fact they won't do that. They'll always stay in Poland. It's the best place they stay. Why go lose money in this country here, and where you can make money where you're at? Why? So. I don't mind traveling to Poland. I'm half Polish already. Yeah. Normski. <laughs> but you remember when we fight uh, Logan Paul or Case mm -hmm. in Manchester? Yeah, I remember. Yeah, yeah, I remember this fight. Yeah, big pay per view. They sell good pay per view. Uh, this is war. Uh, USA and UK. Yeah, we got Paul, Logan Paul, Logan. 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 Yeah, big Logan YouTuber. Paul. Logan Paul? I think it was Logan and KSI, big YouTuber from UK, and they fight each other. Of course it's going to do big pay-per-view, of course, because these guys have millions of followers on YouTube, on Instagram, on, and these people, ah, what, what's this fight you're doing? People want to see a fight, you know? Even if they're not proper professionals, people will still watch it. So you need to be able to never be a closed mind to all these new ideas because helps us in the long run it's helping fighters to get promoted better because in general most mma fighters are underpaid you know in general you know when fighters go to even bellator in the first time in bellator first time ufc it's not very good you know what you what people think it's not not good at all and the way jake paul says about people getting paid should get paid fifty thousand dollars per fight i think this is a fair idea this is true. I think when you go to the UFC, you should get paid fifty thousand dollars straight away. Because me fighting when I was in the UFC, I got to almost top ten in the world. I was like top fifteen, and I fight Gleason Tebow, I lose split decision, then I fight Ronaldo, I lose split decision, and you drop drop down a bit. It's not easy. It's tough. It is tough, and the MMA game is a funny, funny game. You can be here one one year there, and next year, boom, there. But then again, 
next year you can be here again. So, hmm. it's a funny sport. It's totally different from a boxing sport. In boxing, you can't win five fights and lose five fights. And, you know, it's very, very hard in boxing. MMA is more, you, more opportunity if you lose and come back again. You can do this lots of times. So, I, uh, I like the idea of MMA. I did some boxing fights there last year, but I'm not a boxer. I'm not, I'm just competitive enough, but I'm not a high level boxer. I can take punches, I can give punches, but I'm not a high level boxer, you know. I would be like a, what would you say, journeyman if I was a boxer. But MMA is my strong, I, I like because I can work my strike and to help for my MMA game. And, uh, but MMA is, what I liked. I haven't fought MMA since my last fight with Gamrot. My last fight was 2020 against Gamrot, Dr. Stoppage, Dr. Stop the Fight. So I wanted to fight MMA away, straight away, but they don't give me a fight. Yes, because they don't give Gamrot, me. Uh, he goes. Federation. Yeah, yeah, but they don't give me a fight on the KSW. I wanted to fight on the end of uh, 2020, but no fights. No fights for a long time. And then. I signed with Fame MMA. So, yeah. Um, I remember you have a problem about contract when you leave it with KSW. Yeah, but my contract only finished on December past. December. Yeah. The contract just finished, but before Fame MMA had to pay money for KSW to allow me to fight in Poland mm -hmm. because I was under contract with KSW. Yes. But now my contract's finished. Fame MMA don't need to pay money for KSW. So, even though I don't fight for KSW for two times, I make KSW good money in the last two times. Now that's good business. <laughs> that's good business for Lewandowski, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> but I don't know, I would like to, I would like to fight there again. I would, I would honestly like to fight there again. To like, uh, I would love to be able, I would love to fight lightweight one more time, give it another go, like really put my mind to it. These times, these fights here, I'm comfortable, you know, I don't need to like completely get my diet properly, but lightweight is tough to make, but I would love to have a go at Marian Shukovsky. I would love to fight Marian Shukovsky. I would like to fight someone in a, if I was to go back to KSW, I would like to go and fight someone first and lightweight, win that fight and fight for the title. Because I know if I have a proper training camp and I do weight good, not underweight, not too heavy, just perfect. If I'm perfect weight cut and I feel strong, I, I'm a tough fight. I know I'm a tough fight. I can be a tough fight and I can win. I can win the belt. I know I can. But I don't know. I don't think, I want to think too much about it. But I would love to be able to go back and fight there again in the future. But I don't know. It's like... KSW has changed. There's lots of young fighters coming up now. You know, the lots of new prospects coming through on uh, KSW at the moment. You are ready for a uh, trash talk with Popek? Popek? <laughs> I don't know if he says something to... He can speak good English. His English is very good. Yeah, I think so. Because he lived 10 years in UK. Yeah. So if he wants to say some things to me, I'll say some things back. No problem. <laughs> I'm going to ask him one question. Why, uh, uh, between rounds, why one minute, uh, 30 seconds rest? Why? Why do we need one minute, 30 seconds rest? Why not just one minute? <laughs> oh, yeah, this is a good question. Hmm. Exactly. This is a good question. Three rounds, three minutes, yeah. one minute, 30 seconds yeah. rest. Kurva. <laughs> just, uh, we'll see what happens. But I'm going to fight. Anyway, we're going to fight no matter how, how much time we have. We're going to fight, so... I see weakness already, you know, that's, I'm already a step ahead, he's, I find this is a weak thing, you know, because I says, no, not one minute, 30 seconds, one minute, we don't fight you, we don't fight you, okay, no problem, bye, see ya, I says, oh, you know, Popic needs some time rest between rounds, he's got not good stamina, yeah, 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 whatever, no problem, we'll fight, so, I don't care how much time he needs. Just make him work. Take his punches and make him work. 
And people try to put doubt in my mind, you know, people will always, yeah, but he's big muscles, he's bigger than you, if he hits you, if he does that, yeah, yeah, if, 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 if. We hear it all the time, don't try to put doubt in my mind, because these people are just, clover, fuck off. You know, people will try, I'm not stupid, you don't need to tell me what I already know. I know he's has lucky. He's got a lucky punch. He can lucky punch me yeah, yeah. and rock me, whatever. I've never been knocked out, I'm but ready I'm ready for everything. I'm. I can visualize him hit me big punch, and I'm oh yeah, Peter Dollar, cool. I grab his legs and hang on for, uh, for my death till death. But this is when I fight better. Whenever the going gets tough, and I suck him into my world, make him work, make him work, make him work. The more I make him work, the more he's going to get tired. And when I sense, if I smell him getting tired, it's game over. It's game, he knows it's game over. If he, if I can smell him getting tired, I'm. It's game over, one hundred percent. He's on the ground. Smash, smash, elbow, pop it. Give me your teeth. One more chance. Elbow. Ah, ah. Give me. Give me your, your teeth and I will we'll be good. We'll be friends still. Give me your teeth, we'll be friends. One more time. Okay, no. <laughs> and the winner by TKO, Stormin. Park. Norman Park. <laughs> yeah, so uh, it's an interesting fight. I, I think it's going to sell a good pay-per-view because the real hardcore fans will be like, alright, oh, Normal's a proper fighter who has lots of experience, fought all over the world. But Popic's big, he has a chance to knock him out. And people who don't know sports will be like, oh fuck, this big guy's going to kill him. This big guy's going to murder him. This big guy's going to do this. This big boy's going to do that. And then they'll be surprised when they see what really happens. Yeah. You see fight uh, Conor McGregor and uh, Tor. Yeah, but this is not a fight. This is it's just fight, but only just playing about. Like this is nothing. This is if Thor really grabbed Conor McGregor, put him to the ground. Thor just sit on him and kill him. <laughs> yes. You know, realistically, let's be real. It's not even a fight. It's nothing. It's just a play about. But Popic's not big like that. Popic's smaller. You can hit Popic on the head. Thor's away up there. You got to jump the punch and hit him. But no. I can take a good dig, I'm ready for his punches. Punch my guard, hit me on the guard. Punch, punch my guard, come, 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 come. <laughs> Smile, laugh at him, talk to him during the fight and play with his mind. That's what I see. I see win, I win the fight. I'm gonna win the fight. I'm gonna win the fight. But I'm not stupid, I know he can lucky punch, so. But I'm going to win the fight. <clears throat> I'm going to win the fight. All day. Easy money. Easy money? Yeah. Maybe not at the start, maybe for a while tough, but... <laughs> it will be eventually. Uh, and then Boxdale, Boxdale, after the fight, I want to fight Boxdale after, like the way they did to this bitch Casio. They did uh, give Casio the belt. And Boxdale Box sparring, Boxdale. three rounds sparring. There you go, belt back. Belt? He's got it. He left. He's, 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 he's away. He's left. Oh. Now. Hmm. So, who is your sponsor for uh, this uh, fight with Popek? Yeah, I've got a few new sponsors. Um, new sponsor is from Pol mostly Polish. Uh, because I fight in Poland, I think it's better for me to have sponsors from Poland. Uh, Sim Industry is a company uh, who's my recent, most recent sponsor. They've uh, this is their first time sponsoring me, so uh, a shout out to them for they're going to be at the fight to watch my fight. They're going to support the fight, and um, I'll see them this week when I come to Poland. So a big thanks to them. Also, uh, um people who've sponsored me for about the last maybe four or five fights uh, it's a company a transport company in Poland very very big uh, transfer. yeah yeah uh, transfer and transfer. I don't know where this uh, place is Lesno Lesno yeah. yeah transfer and Lesno uh, people are very nice they help me a lot they're called uh, uh, main guy Sebastian you know he's the owner of the company and uh, uh, Anna An Anita 
his girlfriend, his wife, a girlfriend. Don't know if they're married yet, but I need to go and meet them when we, we come to Poland this this uh, this weekend. And uh, for this fight here, they're my two main sponsors. But also, I got Extreme Hobby Illegal Night sponsored me my last few fights in uh, Fame MMA. Buddha, Buddha from a Buddha. Yeah, yeah, he's a big company. This guy who started off himself. He did his own thing from the start. I heard a story about him where he start from from the bottom and worked his way up and made the, this happen himself, you know? So I think uh, this is, I respect that, you know? When people says he couldn't do it, he did it. So I respect that. I need to see them guys when I come to Poland this weekend too. So I've had lots of support from people here before all my career and uh, when I was in the UFC, people who supported me, lots of sponsors, lots of people have sponsored me from the UK and but now I'm fighting in Poland, lots of Polish companies. It's better for Polish companies to support me because I'm fighting there, you know? Don't think it's real good for me to be sponsored by someone from the UK. I've been fighting in Poland all the time, so... Uh, <clears throat> I thank all the Polish sponsors for, for their support. So, it's all good. And when you see you in the cage 26 March <clears throat> in Gliwice Arena, See you there, see you there. Thank you, Norman, for the uh, uh, interview and see you next time in March in Poland. Dziękuję. Dziękuję. Hmm. See you. Do zobaczenia następnym razem. Trzymajcie się. Na razie. Oh, this is Finnish. How do you say it? What's dobra? Na razie. Na razie. What? I said na razie. Nara, nara. Nara, nara bye. Nara. nara. Dobra, nara. very good bye. Bye. Nara, nara. this is. Nara. 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 nara.